What's good, Commanders fans? So you guys have heard it. The Washington Commanders have traded Montez Sweat to the Chicago Bears for a second round pick. This is a solid trade, especially since the Chicago Bears are going to have a high second round pick. They are just, they're just not a good team. Even though they beat us, they are going to have a high second round pick. A funny stat is that Montez Sweat has six and a half sacks on the season and the Bears only have six and a half sacks from their whole defensive line. And um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Montez Sweat, man. I think he's he's been a, a great guy for sure. You know, he had a broken jaw one season, uh, lost his brother. I think he's going to be a great player for them. I think he can improve. And he's on pace for having double digit sacks. I always remember the pick six that he had against Dallas where he jumped into the rafters. I used to call him Montez Swat. Uh, he, 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 he was very, I'm not going to say he never hit his potential here, but I do think he, he just didn't finish. That's the only thing with him. He would get there, but he just didn't finish. He had a couple uh, couple seasons where he had like seven, eight, nine sacks, got pressure. We traded up into the first round for him because the previous regime really, really wanted him instead of drafting a quarterback at 15. They really wanted Montez Sweat, but they drafted a quarterback, and then they opted to move up into the draft and draft Montez Sweat and got him uh, traded with the Indianapolis Colts. But um, aside all that, I just want to say a quick shout-out to him. He's been nothing but a, 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 a constant – Constant professional for this team, hardworking guy. Um, never saw anything bad with him, honestly. So from what I saw, him interacting with fans and whatnot, taking selfies and just interacting with, with the fans and whatnot, I thought he was a good guy for sure. And, um, you know, the, this D-line, all the first-round picks, they never lived up to the hype, but they had some good moments. They had some good moments. Beating the Steelers uh, when they were undefeated, when Montez had a big swat on uh, Ben Roethlisberger, the, the pick six on Andy Dalton in Dallas on Thanksgiving. There were some good moments. There were just definitely some ups and downs for sure. I remember he had a big game against the Titans too. So I just want to give Montez Sweat some credit and, and, and definitely, you know, send him off with good vibes for sure. I think he's going to excel with the with the Bears for sure. I think he's going to be really good with the Bears. I think he's definitely going to make at least one Pro Bowl before his his career is over for sure. So I'm, I'm happy for him. You know, I know Atlanta was in the bidding. They, they offered a third-round pick, ended up getting a second-round pick for Montez instead. And, and that's a good move, man. We got, we have two second round picks now. Now we, we don't do well with second round picks. Darius Geis, Sua Cravens. Um, you can go all the way back to like Malcolm Kelly, Devin Thomas, just being bad second round picks. We just haven't done well with them. Um, Sam Cosby's a solid second round pick, but other than that, Fidari Mathis, the jury's still out on him and same thing with Quan Martin, but second round picks, Ryan Anderson. Um, he was basically a second round bust. He's not even in the NFL, NFL anymore, if, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, yeah, this is a good pickup, man. This is a good pickup for um, for us to get Montez Sweat for a second round pick and not just settle for a third round pick, compensatory pick. So this is a good trade, in my opinion. I think this is a good deal. I wish Montez Sweat the best. This showed you that Josh Harris stepped in because Ron Rivera probably would not have made this move. He probably would not have made this move. I think they forced his hand to make this move. We saw Montez Sweat after the game. He was one of the last players to leave the field. He stepped up, and he um, pro and then you hear the interview with him last time. Uh, he had an interview. And he was like, "This is just a business." You know, I had a good time here, but you could tell that he, the, that he was ready to move on. The questions are: Are we going to trade Jacoby Brissett? Uh, JP Finlay said that you know, keep an eye open to uh, Antonio Gibson possibly being traded. He's hearing some rumors about that, and just some some sources and stuff like that. Uh, Chase Young, I think this means that we keep him. I think, you know, of course, he's more marketable. He's just younger. He has more potential. So I don't blame them for keeping him. He's having a solid season so far. Montez Sweat's having a, a solid season as well with six and a half sacks on a year on pace to get like 11 or 12. Same thing with Chase Young. He's on pace to get double-digit sacks. But I get it. You know, it's unfortunate we couldn't keep both guys. But when you pay John Allen, you pay Deron Payne, you're going to pay Chase Young most likely or franchise tag him. And you got to pay Montez Sweat. It's just a lot of money tied up to a defensive line that just has not consistently dominated. And I think we need to invest more money. The money in draft capital that we invested in the defensive line, it needs to go to the O-line and helping out Sam Howell. And, and if he is going to be the future guy, we got to beef up this offensive line with some top first round, second round picks like we, like we beefed up the defensive line. So um, I think it's a good trade. We get another high second round pick and maybe you could package them up together and move into the first round. That's, some, that's a possibility as well. Um, just looking at any notes that I have here. Before I wrap this up, um, yeah, the Bears are projected to have the most cap space in the NFL this all season, over 110 million dollars. So yeah, they're definitely gonna they're definitely gonna extend him. He's gonna get another contract for sure. But I would definitely take a look at trading um, Jacoby Brett Brissett for sure. If we can get a fifth or a sixth or something like that, I would take a look at that. Antonio Gibson, 
it is what it is. It's contract year. I don't think he's coming back, but he's like the only running back that we have that can. Brian Robinson can catch out the backfield too, but um, Antonio Gibson is definitely the better pass catching back out of the back. We just don't have a lot. We just don't really have a third down change of pace back other than Antonio Gibson. But uh, we'll see who else we sell off. The crazy thing is we're still in the playoff hunt. Talking about playoffs, playoffs. But uh, Ron Rivera, he just doesn't. He, I don't want to see him make the playoffs. I want the players to make the playoffs, of course. But Ron Rivera does not coach to the. He, he's just not a. He's not a playoff caliber coach at this point. He's just not too slow to challenge. Uh, too slow to call the too th too slow to throw the challenge flag. Um, terrible on fourth down decision making, calling timeouts, clock management. Um, he said he didn't, he didn't call the challenge on uh, Devontae Smith because he didn't see the replay. That's just inexcusable stuff. And he didn't even know we were going to get eliminated from the playoffs last year when we lost to the Browns. So it, it, it's just time for Ron to go. It's just time for him to go. So I like the direction that Josh Harris is going. They just, the Sixers just traded James Harden. So he's very busy today. His, his management offices are very, very, his general managers are very, very busy today. So I think he stepped in and made this move for sure. Um, but like I said, I, I wish Montez the best. I think he's going to thrive on another team, and I, I really wish him the best for sure. We'll see what happens with Chase Young in the offseason. I think he's going to stay. Kendall Fuller, I would keep him. We'll see what happens with him. But Jacoby, Curtis Samuel, I think they, they're going to keep him, even though he's a free agent upcoming this season. I think we should. he's having a good season, so I wouldn't mind bringing him back just to keep a weapon for Sam Howe. Um, but those are the other free agents that I, I can think of. It's really just Jacoby, Antonio Gibson, Curtis Samuel, Kendall Fuller. Those are the only guys that really have trade value. And then Cameron Curl is a guy that uh, I think Jeremy Fowler said that they're definitely going to bring him back. They're looking to extend him. So they're not going to trade him. So you guys let me know what you guys think. I give this, I give it, I give it an A. I give it an A minus A. I think that's the best value you could get. You were not going to get a first round pick. And this is better than getting a third round uh, com compensatory pick that you're not going to see until 2025. So you get a second round pick. So this is a good trade. And uh, you can definitely get it. Let's get a lineman. Let's beef up the old line. Let's get a tackle. Let's get a guard. Let's do that. I'm excited. I'm excited for the draft. I really am. I'm excited. So three and five right now. Winnable game against the Patriots. Um, we are somewhat in the playoff hunt for a wild card. But, you know, we'll see what, what the team, what else they do. We'll see what else they do. Trading Jacoby to me doesn't really impact the team at all. Um, and trading, trading Montez, not going to lie to you, it probably doesn't really impact the win column a lot, to be honest, because we, we, we didn't make the playoffs with him in any way. So, all right, you guys. You guys let me know what you guys think. Health the Commanders. Peace.